Universities are known as hubs of knowledge that produce workers instead of employers. However, there are some young people who are changing this perception. We had a conversation about books and businesses with three students who are making a name for themselves in the entrepreneurial space on campus. Tina Shejani, Vanessa Macholowe, and Amina Deka Asma. Hello guys, thank you so much for joining me in this little tea party thing that we're having. So guys, I basically want us to start having a conversation about funding. Like, how important is it for like a startup to have a big sort of corporation investing in their business? I'll start with you, Amina. I think like if you think you're gonna start big, like you're not gonna start anyway. Mm. Like, um, for example, for me and me and my my business, I literally started putting money in for my pocket money, so I'd save up, and then I'd buy goods. So I first started off with buying denim jackets. Like, I bought five denim jackets, and then I sold them. And from the sales, like the profit, then everything grew and that's how it worked. That brings me to the to a question about research. Like how important is it or what kind of research have you guys done before entering into your businesses? Because I know that, especially with you, Tinashe, like, you know, there's a lot of volatility that happens around with the markets. So how sure were you or when did you know that for sure this can work out? All right, so <clears throat> obviously it took us like quite some time to put a time frame to it over a year of actually getting comfortable with the markets because mm -hmm. essentially you're dealing with very volatile markets. I can give you a quote as to how much it is right now and then in five minutes it will have changed. Mm -hmm. So I had to learn trends, graph analysis, okay. things like that. So, But once you have a vision to what you want it to become, you will put in those hours, you will put in that time. So you have to just put in the hours. The time is actually very important, otherwise you actually dive into something and then oh. you end up landing right on your head and you have to land on your feet always. Yeah. Speaking of landing on your feet, I mean as the little feet paced up and down her late mother's salon. The apple clearly didn't fall far from the tree as Amina has since fell in love with twists and curls. It was later on in life that her love for unique clothing led her to another business venture. So I grew up in a hair salon, literally. That's actually a, one of the names of my blogs. Um, and I learned how to do hair from a very, a very early age. And to earn pocket money over the holidays, my mom taught me how to do hair. So I'd help her at the hair salon. Me and my sister and my siblings helped her. And then I started realizing that this could actually be a business. So after she passed away, I just did hair on the side. And it's actually grown from strength to strength. I'm actually doing about two to three people a, a week here on campus. And when it comes to the clothes, I think um, I mainly got inspired by my sister. My sister's a professional stylist. And she styled a lot of different people. And I think if it's one thing that we've always hated is the fact that nice clothes are expensive and we can't afford those nice clothes. This is a crop jersey, mainly for winter and spring, that we're gonna launch now. It's 200 Rand. And I'd really like to bring in that aspect of social media. How has social media equipped each and every one of you in terms of growing your business and putting yourself out there? And is it, is it something that should be used is it mutually exclusive from face-to-face -face marketing or can they be used together in order to sort of build a stronger uh, business brand and image? I'll start with you. I think I think face-to-face -face marketing and social media go together. Mm. So, um, so for instance, with face-to-face -face marketing, right, someone sees how, let's say someone sees my hair or they see my face and they, they're like, can I please take a selfie with you or can I please take a picture of you for like journal something or for my blog or something and I feel like that gives you more exposure mm. so you can't be one thing on social media and be a totally mm. different mm. thing in real life so these things have to work together because then one thing I've learned with business is that you have to be consistent so if you say your business stands for something so for instance I do makeup and I can't say that I do makeup if every day my face is bare. Like, what what reference point do people have? So there are times when I've gone to um, give people talks about makeup and stuff like that, and I didn't have to have to do it on someone else. Like, I just explained off of my own face, you know? So things like that, that you definitely have to um, work together, yeah. So for us, social media, um, for... 
I mean, most of the problems that we realized we were trying to solve, we actually got them from social media research. So people would post on the pages and say, uh, guys, my card limit is $25 a month. Does anyone want to borrow me money? I have money in my card. Then you can transfer the money back home, and then I'll pay you here, and then all those problems. So most of our research came from social media. So when we created a Facebook uh, page, we were now basically sharing it on all those pages we saw the problems. So for us, that's how social media has been useful. So our business idea basically started about a year ago. Uh, we started having out-of-the-country limits in terms of our cards. So if, as a student, I wanted to pay my rent, the limit was now $100 a month. So that $100 a month equals about 1,300 rand. So we sat down with a couple of my colleagues. We wanted to find a way out. Um, that's when we decided, wait, Bitcoins are used to transfer money around the world. Why don't we actually establish our own platform to help other students like ourselves? For Vanessa, makeup is art and the face is a canvas. She tells us more about her journey in making money from a hobby. I officially started um, this year in April. Before I just used to do my friends makeup and stuff like that for fun. Obviously I'd ask them and then they'd be like, yeah sure, you know, come practice on our faces. So um, I've loved makeup for a long time but I only officially started as a business this year in April. How the week thing came about is that there's this girl, she used to be here last year, her name is Uno, she used to make wigs, really, really nice wigs. And I, I was really curious about how the whole thing is done. And then I started to YouTube it and stuff like that. Then I was like, you know what, I bought a mannequin and I was like, I can do this by myself actually. Mm. Then I started to make wigs, posted on my Instagram that I made this wig. And then a lot of people were like, oh, make my wig, make my wig. Oh, So thank you so much guys for joining me. This has really been a, a very insightful and inspirational chat. Um, yeah, thank you very much for tuning in.